Steam engines can be fueled with many different things. In the early days, some were powered by wood, many relied on coal, and in the later years of steam, a large number of engines even ran on liquid fuels like oil or gas. Over time, many engineers have tried to find alternate or more efficient fuels to run their engines on. One of these engineers was Oliver Bullied, who had the revolutionary idea to try and fuel an engine with mud. For decades, Ireland and Irish Railways experimented with burning turf, or as it's more widely known, peat. To simplify, peat is made up of moss, plants and other wetland shrubbery that has built up over time and partially decayed into a mud-like state. Essentially organic matter that's in the beginning stages of becoming a fossil fuel. It mostly forms around bogs or similar kinds of wetland and has many uses, but primarily, when dried out, can be burnt to produce a substantial amount of heat. It had been used for centuries as a means of cooking and domestic heating, so naturally, many engineers wanted to see if it was capable of powering a steam engine. Many tried, but given the abundance of coal and the fact peat didn't burn quite as hot as coal, peat-fired designs never really took off. It wasn't until the 1930s when Ireland took a renewed interest in turf burning designs. Wartime coal shortages, combined with goals of rural development and energy security, led to a demand to increase turf production. Some railways had to use turf in place of coal when supplies ran low, and eventually alternatives to coal were being looked into. The CIE converted 93 engines to burn oil in 1946, but this project was quickly abandoned after coal supplies picked up again. Andrew Barclay built three narrow-gauge engines specifically designed to burn turf in 19. 49 for use in Ireland, but these only lasted three years before being withdrawn. In 1949, Oliver Bullied retired from British Railways and was brought in as a consulting mechanical engineer for the CIE in Ireland before moving up to chief mechanical engineer. He helped the railway with the process of dieselization. However, with diesel fuel still being relatively expensive and the advantages of diesel still being unproven, Bullied felt it was worth exploring other options and took a keen interest in turf burning designs. After several laboratory experiments using stationary boilers, he moved on to testing a full-sized engine running exclusively on turf in 1951. He took a former Great Southern and Western Railway Class K3 and had it rebuilt with a firebox fitted with air pipes, two Crosti-style feed water heaters, preheating coils in the water tank, the chimney was set behind its tender, and turf would be fed into the firebox by an auger. After problems with steaming, the engine was fitted with a forced draft fan, which was mounted onto a wagon behind the tender and powered by a Leyland bus engine. With mixed results, the engine was eventually broken up in 1957. Armed with all the knowledge he needed, Bullied finally got to work on putting together his turf-burning engine. Wanting to make an engine with all the comforts of modern diesels and with his leader design still fresh in his mind, he set to work. The end result was a tank engine fitted with a double-ended boiler, two cabs, feed water heaters, induction fans to improve airflow and mechanical stokers, mounted on two sets of swiveling bogies. All the wheels were powered by a two-cylinder steam engine and connected with a chain transmission. The CC1, as it was dubbed, was more comparable to a double Fairley engine in a square casing than a standard locomotive. It was shorter than Bullied's previous leader design, lighter, had fewer cylinders, and was balanced much better. Testing began in July of 1957 primarily between Dublin and Cork. It was found to handle well, capable of travelling comfortably at 70 miles an hour while maintaining a favourable noise level and burning turf at a moderate rate. However, despite its articulated design, it was found to handle poorly on tighter curves. Some problems the engine suffered with were easily amended, such as exhaust smoke and steam blocking the driver's view, necessitating smoke deflectors be fitted. The engine also supposedly caused several lineside fires, leading to spark arresters also being fitted. Some problems it suffered from, however, couldn't be so easily amended, such as its high water consumption as well as leakage of the chain drive's oil baths. A problem many 
of Bullitt's designs suffered from. Another major drawback of the design was the positioning of its controls, as when operating from its number one end, it was fine. But when driving from its number two end, both the driver and the fireman were positioned on the same side of the engine, making it awkward to see ahead when they had to share the same space. Despite its shortcomings, CC1 proved that firing an engine on turf was entirely plausible, and that with a little more refinement, Ireland was more than capable of producing a fleet of turf-burning machines. John Click, an engineer that had been helping with the trial, designed a single-ended version of CC1, which would address many of the engine's issues. The idea was to have the engines primarily burn oil, but could easily be converted to burn turf in an emergency. Unfortunately, this design never came to fruition. CC1 continued testing, and was even reported to have hauled several freight trains around Dublin. However, when Bullied retired in 1958, CC1 was retired as well. Despite its success, with Ireland moving towards dieselization, it was likely the railway didn't consider turf burning or other steam variations worth developing further if they were to be obsolete in just a few years' time. As such, Click's designs weren't pursued, and the CC1 project was abandoned. CC1 was officially withdrawn in 1963 and broken up in 1965 with its boiler being retained for stationary use while its chassis remained in Inchicore. A CIE executive later remarked that scrapping the engine was a pity, and that such an oddity deserved preservation. In the end then, the CC1 was just another tragic example of a good idea in the wrong place at the wrong time. The fact Bullied managed to pull off building an engine that could be fired on turf and still perform is quite an achievement, but given that the rest of the world was starting to move on from steam simply meant it got left behind. If the design came a few decades earlier, it may have completely changed Ireland's railways. But alas, the CC1 remains a reminder that it isn't always the idea that's bad. Sometimes, it's just the timing. Subscribe for more.